Good morning, friends. So, I see this topic constantly, almost on a daily basis in the mom groups that I'm in um, on Facebook that talk about, my baby has eczema, what do you use for it? <clears throat> and um, so, it's kind of frustrating because I had eczema um, as a child and later on um, in my high school years, I dealt with it. I had it on my face, my cheeks, I had it on my arms and on my back um, and I would get super frustrated with it, um, especially in the summertime because I would have, you know, the places that you have eczema, it doesn't allow any melatonin or melanin um, to produce and um, that's what gives your skin color. So I had all these white spots all over um, and even on my face and it was a little itchy. I didn't have it so severely that it was super red and scaly like some people do. But um, what, what I want to address is that cortisone creams and stuff um, anything applying topically, and yes, there are things that you can use to soothe your skin and support your skin, and essential oils and coconut oil, um, you know, mixing together your own little, um, you know, skin cream and stuff is going to soothe it, it's going to help it, but is it going to make it go away? Absolutely not. Until you address your gut, it is not going to go away. If you have dry skin, if you have itchy skin, if you have psoriasis, if you have eczema, if you have any kind of skin issues, it is not going, <clears throat> excuse me, to go away unless you address your gut. So let me explain something. A lot of people don't even realize this. Um, the microbiome, and I talked about this in the other video that I did about your gut health and um, the amount of bacteria that lives in your gut that functions as your immune system. The majority of your immune system lives in your gut. That's how we keep from getting sick um, if you have a really healthy gut. So if you're getting sick a lot, you really need to address your gut. But then look at all these other symptoms you could be having. Um, so the microbiome within the gut has around a thousand grams of bacteria that digest nutrients that helps you produce hormones and vitamins. It helps metabolize um, drugs and toxins that are introduced to your body. Now we're introduced to toxins um, through the environment. Um, you know, through products that you use, um, through air that you breathe in. I mean, constantly. Our body has to be able to metabolize that and break it down. Um, by drugs, you know, of course, that means if you're taking prescriptions, if you're using over-the-counter stuff and all that kind of um, stuff. That is broken down in your gut. If you don't have a lot of good bacteria in your gut, it's hard for you to break that stuff down. So just process that. Um, and then the intestinal cells um, called the enterocytes prevent substances from leaking through the cell wall. It creates a tight, a, like a really tight junction in the cell wall. So certain triggers and stresses are thought to call what they call it a, um, a dysbiosis, um, a cellular junction disruption, um, allowing permeability of the cell wall. So what does this mean? It means that you have holes in the cell wall of your intestines that are allowing toxins and other substances to leak through into your body, into your bloodstream. Now, our body is so intelligent and amazing that when your intestines are in good health, the cell wall allows nutrients to, to go through into your body, but keeps out the stuff that's bad for us. Okay, so that's what's so cool. But 
if your gut is out of balance and um, has a lot of stressors and stuff like that, then you have leaky gut. I'm sure people now, a lot more people are hearing more about leaky gut. Okay, so um, let's just talk about some things that are affected or some conditions that are caused by leaky gut. They've been directly linked to it. I can post studies that show this um, that you can read. So, um, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, celiac, fibrosis, food intolerance, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, all of these things um, are linked to leaky gut. So, stresses, stresses on the body and, and triggers, food intolerances. Um, anytime that anybody comes to me um, and talks about, you know, my kid has eczema, I have eczema, I have skin problems and everything, I'm like, sure, there's stuff that I can tell you that will soothe the skin, but if you don't address the gut, you are not going to completely get rid of it. It's always going to come back. So, that's what you have to do. You, um, here's what we did. If you see a functional medicine doctor, functional medicine doctors are going to start at the diet. Um, they're not going to give you creams and stuff like that. Um, they're going to start with the diet. So they're going to tell you um, the, the biggest triggers um, for um, gut health and inflammation and stuff like that is dairy and gluten. Sometimes also corn. Corn is found in everything now. Um, you look at any packaged food and you're going to see high fructose corn syrup or corn starch. Um, it has other names. And um, so eating whole foods, eating foods with one ingredient, and by that I mean, you know, you're talking broccoli, you're talking apples, a banana, um, your chicken, you know, you, you're having whole foods, foods that are not in a box or a package, okay? Um, and so, you should go through an elimination diet to see and then slowly reintroduce the food and see what triggers are. Um, we have completely eliminated dairy and gluten from our diet for our kids because we saw that that was um, what was causing my youngest son's eczema and, um, and then my oldest son had chronic ear infections. Removing dairy from his diet um, it took six months for us to see major improvement. That's how long sometimes you have to stick with it. But it's so worth it. Um, so removing dairy um, got rid of his ear infections. Um, that was amazing. Our doctor basically said that's a myth. Dairy does not cause excess mucus, blah, blah, blah. So well, it's not going to hurt us to try. We're doing it. Most people would just listen to the doctor and just say, okay, yeah, you know what you're talking about. Um, and I love doctors, you guys. Um, I know many people that are physicians, MDs, and everything. I love them. They get minimal nutrition education in school. Very minimal. They get less than I did going to school as an exercise physiologist and exercise science. I had um, like six or seven nutrition classes while I was um, getting my four-year degree. They get about maybe four hours total in their seven years of going to school. So, do they know how foods affect the body? They don't. Do they know what foods can help heal the body? They don't. So, for them to give advice on that, really they don't have the education unless they have taken it upon themselves to do the research. So functional medicine doctors, on the other hand, that is something that they learn about. And they will tell you to look at the gut and start removing foods. Um, so 
how do you heal the gut? Okay, so let's work towards that. Food elimination is gonna be your number one. Probiotics, introducing bacteria in the gut that's gonna help break down food. It's gonna um, soothe your gut a lot more. Enzymes, enzymes are great for taking with your meals because they're gonna help your body break down food a lot easier. You're not gonna have bloating and indigestion and all that kind of stuff when you have enzymes. The food just isn't what it used to be when, with our great grandparents. They didn't deal with stuff like this, like we're dealing with, um, because they ate foods that they produced um, pretty much. Um, you know, they you know farmed and all that kind of stuff, got their own food or got food from farmer's markets and stuff like that. So enzymes are a big deal. I use Young Living's um, Essential Zyme and Allerzyme. People that have allergies, Allerzyme is gonna be um, a great enzyme. I take them with my meals. It makes a huge difference. And then, um, Introduce bone broth, drinking bone broth, or using collagen, um, unflavored um, collagen that you can dissolve, that dissolves in water. You can add it to water, you can add it to coffee, you can add it to soups, you can add it to anything. Your children will not taste it. Um, that will um, also repair the gut lining and heal the gut. Those are places you need to start for that. Um, and just think about it. Your skin is the largest organ. Its job is as a barrier. It's a protector. And if your gut is um, compromised, that is coming through your skin. And your skin's trying to get that stuff out that your gut is trying to leak. It's doing its job. It's trying to get it out. But it's coming through as eczema or itchy skin or dry skin and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to share that because I just see so much posted about this almost on a daily basis that I just feel like the education is lacking for a lot of people. People don't know that your gut health has so much to do with your skin health um, and that we um, would just be so much better off if we knew where to start with it. So y'all have an awesome day, okay?